Hello and welcome to another video here at W Plus 9. This is Dawn. So today I've got a really fun technique for you. You all know that I'm in love with watercolor and anytime that I can come up with a technique that allows you to achieve watercolor-like results with little effort, I'm there. All right, so this is going to use a technique that we are all very familiar with. I'm using the Winter Wonder Backgrounds Honey Bee Stencil here. This is a great stencil set that creates a layered winter scene background. Um, lots of different uh, lines here that you could use for mountains or just um, hills or the grass line. I'm going to be using particularly this stencil here. and I'm going to use this middle line. It's just a jagged line. I am going to, in future samples, use a couple of the other stencils. But for the most part, you just need this like jagged line. And if you don't have a stencil like this or this stencil, don't worry. I'm going to show you another way to do it uh, a little bit later with a just a piece of torn masking paper. Okay, so I have taken the paper and I've pushed it through the slit and I've exposed some of the stencil and I'm very lightly ink blending a layer of my lightest color. I'm going to be working in rainbow order on this one. So I've started off with our little piggy ink. Now I want to go pretty light. In fact, this one is probably about a medium intensity. Um, the reason I want to go light is because we're going to create these ribbons of color that overlap each other. So you can see that I am just shifting my stencil a little bit at an angle and now I'm exposing more paper. Again, I'm going to ink up my uh, brush here. I'm using the Tailored Expression inking, blush and, inking blushes, ink brushes, <laughs> but you could use whatever tool you have on hand. And I'm working, I'm starting on the stencil and then moving off onto the paper. Now the reason I'm doing this is so that I can A, make sure that I'm applying light layers of color and B, you see that hard edge that it creates where the, um, the stencil ends, where the bristles of the brush catch the edge of the stencil and lay down a little bit more ink. Now normally we try to avoid this. However, in this case, it's gonna create that hard edge that watercolor dries with and make this look like it is layers of watercolor glazed on top of each other. Again, I'm just going to reposition that paper, expose a little bit more and tilt it at a slightly different angle. And this is a technique that we should all be pretty familiar with because we do this um, when we want to do clouds in the sky, but the difference is we're always careful not to overlap each of our layers. Here, I'm purposely overlapping my layers because this is uh, dye ink. It is translucent and each layer progressively gets darker. So you can see the layer underneath and you can still see each layer individually. And this just gives that gorgeous ribbon like effect. I love it. I'm in love with it and guys, I couldn't stop. I created several cards and I'll share them all with you. In fact, my friend had to tell me to stop already and just edit this video. <laughs> but I'll be back. I'll be making more of them, don't you worry. All right, we're gonna throw this into fast motion because it's just a repeat of that exact same thing. Occasionally, I will pull out a piece of masking paper here and I will mask the top and the bottom. So I'm creating um, like a wedge and I will come in with um, slightly heavier color here. I'll come in pretty dark and I can get away with this by masking my previous work and it won't completely cover up my other uh, layers. Again, that's why we are going with light layers that overlap versus heavy layers of color. Although they are translucent, if you go too heavy, too quickly, you're going to cover up your previous layers. That's why it's always best to do lighter layers of color and alternate between like very, very light and then like medium light. Because I'm not masking off my previous layers, some of those are going to get a little extra ink as I progress and that's fine. So here you can see the progress so far. Now, as I mentioned, I'm using our inks today and the reason that I'm using, well, the reason I'm using our inks is A, I love them for ink blending. The formula is beautiful. It dries back so smooth, almost like an airbrush finish. 
and the color palette is gorgeous. Now all of our inks, in fact, everything in our ink category at wplus9.com is 50% off right now. So that's all the inks, the sprays, and the refills. If you see a color that you like, definitely I would pick it up because these will not be restocked as they sell out. And if you've already tried our inks and you love them so much, grab those refills because again, like I said, once these sell out, they will not be restocked. All right, so you can see that I am adding another darker wedge of color. Now I do that intermittently down the panel just to create balance and contrast. And the colors that I'm using on this panel are Little Piggy, VI Pink, a little shell pink into sweet nectar. Then I grabbed our hayride, our queen bee, and now I'm going in with last leaf. So I am actually mixing warms and cools, and I think that that just adds a lot of interest. So where some of the colors may get um, a little too warm, I can pop in a little bit of a cooler tone, and those just play beautifully off of each other. Added just a tiny bit of limelight in there, and now we're moving on to Sea Breeze, which is a beautiful uh, light blue green. One of the things you might notice is I have not cleaned off my stencil in between colors, and there's a reason for this. Now, there will be a buildup of color on the stencil. Then as I move to the next color, since I'm using Rainbow Order here, I'm gonna pick up a little bit of that previous color off of the stencil and it's gonna blend with my new color for the first um, stripe or two. Then by like the third or fourth, I'm gonna get the pure color that I'm blending with. This is a great way to really extend those inks and get even more color out of what you're already using. So I really, um, really love the way that that worked out in my favor. One, I'm lazy, I don't wanna clean the stencil. Two, I was able to extend my color palette. Now after Sea Breeze, I went into Ocean Drive. Then I pulled out a little uh, lake house, Bo Peep, moved into a little nautical navy, and now I'm finishing up with Cockle Shell. Now the Cockle Shell, I wanted it to have a little more of a bluish purple tint because this is a pink purple. So one of those lines, I just went over with a little bit of Bo Peep to turn it a little cooler, and then left the bottom as the violet purple. This, isn't it gorgeous? Oh, so pretty. All right, so I promised you that I would show you a way to do it with just masking tape if you don't have a stencil, and this is an easy way. Just, I took a piece of Eclipse masking tape, and I tore it off the roll, and then I tore the other side. So now I have two profiles of a torn edge. Um, I'm gonna use four colors for this one. It's gonna be more of a gradient from yellow to, uh, well, from like a coral color to a yellow. For that, I'm using Sweet Nectar, Flamingo, Wild Mango, and Hayride. And this one, I'm going to make them a little bit wider. I'm gonna make my stripes a little bit wider than I did on the last one. And I'm gonna fly through this one pretty quick because it is fun to watch the progression, uh, watch it being built, but it's also, um, it's, it's ink blending, so it takes a minute. <laughs> But it's fun so there's that now you can see here with those that torn edge it almost looks it looks very ethereal almost like clouds but again because we're overlapping layers it just gives a completely different look than when we do this method to do say clouds it could also look like a landscape if this were in all greens it might look like rolling hills and that's really pretty too so i started with the sweet nectar moved into the flamingo Added a little of the wild mango, and then I'll move into the hayride. Now, at, when I finish this, when I get to the bottom, you'll see that it's a little yellow heavy. Because wild mango is a yellow, it just is more of a golden or an orangey yellow. And I needed something to bridge, um, to bring in a little bit more of an orange. There was too hard of a transition there between the coral and the yellow. So I'm just going to lay down my mask and go back over that with a little bit of that flamingo. And in certain areas, it's going to blend in with that wild mango, and I'm going to get lighter with my touch as I go down so that I get a nice gradation of color there. 
and you can see going right over it after I'd already done doesn't make any difference. It still looks gorgeous. So just something to note, it's not like if you mess up or you made your, wi your lines wider than you wanted to start, you can fix it. Come back in and add more layers. So there is the finished um, ombre one. Now I did another there, and for that one I used two of the stencils from that Honey Bee stencil set. Something a little more jaggedy and something a little more straight, and I loved that combo. Let's turn this into a card. For the first one, we are going to use, well for all of them, we're gonna use the Lots of Love die. This is a great die. You get that love, you get the love shadow, you get some combo words down there, love, you, and sending. And then you also get the lots of love uh, text there with a shadow die. We're gonna use that lots of love. We're gonna cut this directly from the background. This is gonna give our sentiment the exact same seamless pattern of color as the background. To cover up that hole, we're just going to use the shadow die that comes with this die set. I've cut that several times from white uh, three to be exact in this case. And I'm gonna glue those one on top of the other and that's just gonna give it a little bit of uh, height, a little thickness, just for some added dimension. Now gluing these letters on is very easy. I'm using Honey Bee's Precision Glue. Uh, I do recommend a Stronghold glue with a precision tip to apply it. But I'm just going to add that glue, line it up on the background and be done. The script is attached to the letters, so it makes it really easy to line up. And when that's all done, we will just glue that right onto the center. And now it's time to add a sub-sentiment. For that, I'm gonna use the Honey Bee's Miss You Big Time stamp set. And I use that for several of today's cards. I'm gonna use the uh, Sending and the Hugs. And I'm heat embossing that on black cardstock. You could use your Misty or a stamp block. Uh, for this, I like the, the stamp press. And I'm gonna prep my black cardstock using the Rabbit Hole Designs Cotton Tail Embossing Brush, I think it's called. Uh, <laughs> I think that's what it's called. I'll have all of the products linked below in the product or in the video description. Heat set that with some white embossing powder and then I will adhere it. Super simple. Added a little heart also included in that lots of love die and a little bit of a shimmer pin. Let's make another one, two to be exact. These are mini slim lines and I love these. So one of those backgrounds, I cut it in half. I'm gonna use the love sentiment and I'm die cutting three from that background. Then I will adhere that to the shadow die in white. I'm gonna adhere all of these to a dove gray card panel. And I think I cut this down to three by six and uh, finish that off with some more sentiments from that Miss You Big Time set. And it's going to, it's just a super simple, easy rainbow card that um, I love. For the other one, I cut the shadow from a green card stock and then layered it over the background. So simple. Let's take a look at all the cards now. So this is the ombre one we did. Love how this one turned out. Added some glossy accents to those hearts and yeah, that's the last time I'm using those glossy accents. <laughs> I think I need a new bottle. It was not pretty. This was not a pretty process. It took me much longer than it should have to do those glossy accents. This one is probably my favorite. I love these colors. Um, this was Sweet Nectar, Flamingo, Falling Star, Last Leaf, uh, Ocean Drive, Siren Song, Falling for Blue, and Nautical Navy. And then I cut that shadow die from our Hexagon Stackers die and used the U script from the Lots of Love die. Love how that one turned out. I love the vibrancy or the depth of that background. This is the one we created together. Again, just a beautiful rainbow, rainbow background that never fails. Another look at that finished uh, love card here, that mini slim line. Just perfect, nice, simple, and these would be great for masculine cards as well. I think they're pretty gender neutral. And this is a look at the one where I cut the shadow die from a green card stock and just layered it over top of the other half of that background. So I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Remember, the inks are currently on sale, 50% off. So if you need a re-inker, grab it. 
Uh, you can always buy an empty ink pad if the ink pads are sold out of a color that you like, but a reinker is in stock, grab that. All right, you guys, I, again, hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.